Good day, folks, and welcome back to the channel. Hey, yo, man, carry my shit out, then. Y'all want to do like that? Y'all surrounding me around this motherfucker on that, on that Listen, motherfucker. Don't be throwing the shit at me. You don't understand that, dog? Y'all trying to get out of here. How about if we don't? Yeah, come back in. I'm up here at this motherfucker alone. Don't even reach behind nowhere. Reach away. I don't care how old I am. I'm never too old to beat your ass. Don't try to stare me down either, because y'all got to close. Today, we'll show you the moments when biggest damage was caused on a hardcore pond. I need you to give me my money back. I don't know if you bought it from us. You not only owe me $50, but you owe me for my DVD. Where's your receipt? I don't have the receipt. Excuse me, who do you think you are? Who are you? I'm Ashley, and who the hell do you think you are looking me I'm up and down? Sorry. Oh my God. I Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Where are you going? I'm gonna get the best service in the world. There you are go. you gonna put it on the ground? Makes no sense. Anybody want to buy a TV? You want a TV? Go home. Lowball offer. In this thrilling episode, we witnessed the pitfalls of negotiation gone awry. Seller Pete wanted $3,000 for his gold, but Ashley bargained it down to $2,400. My grandfather worked on a railroad in the early 1900s. Beautiful. And I also have other things if you Sure, let me see what want. else you got. So why do you want to get rid of it now? My son's college, my daughter's college. So what I can do is I can offer you a buy price of 2000 That's not enough. I can't do the 3000 that's pretty steep. 25 is the lease I'll go. I'll make you a fair deal at 2250 25 is the lease I'll take. Okay. okay. I'm giving you a gift. 2400 Final offer. Surprisingly, Peter walked away, showing how low offers can hurt business ties. It's a lesson in the dangers of squeezing too hard. Nope. Really? Why didn't I get that in the beginning, that offer? Do you know where you are? You're at a pawn shop. I know that. I we negotiate. That this is correct. OK. But I appreciate it, though. Thank you, ma'am. Have a good day. OK. Seth worried that pushing too far could scare off customers. Good business is about respect and fairness. Lowballing might seem smart at the moment, but it can leave a sour taste and damage future opportunities for everyone involved. You lowballed them right off the bat. Oh, I did not lowball him, Seth. Well, I'm obviously you blew the deal, didn't I, you? You know what, Seth? Why well, did I even come in here? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. You know what? I don't even need to talk to you about this anymore. So remember, it's not just about the deal. It's about keeping relationships strong. Shop robbed. During a shocking event on Hardcore Pond, two thieves broke in through the roof and stole a valuable fur coat before escaping. They peeled the roof off? Peeled the, yeah, they peeled the roof back. Son of a... What's going on? You know what? Somebody broke in last night. Through the roof? Yeah, the alarm company called. They thought it was a false alarm. All right, let's go look at the security camera. This major security breach led Les, Ashley, and Seth to rethink their safety measures and beef up security to prevent future break-ins. Although Les initially hesitated, he soon came to recognize the urgency of the situation. Two guys in two different cars driving around the parking lot. And I think one is enough. What's up? We got broken into last night. Ran in, took a fur coat, and ran out. And I told you that security should have been here at night. Listen, we haven't had a break-in in, in years, so we think now, after discussing it, we're going to have somebody patrolling the parking lot outside. This way, we'll never have that issue with people breaking we in again. We should have had this issue. Well, but we did. One guy patrolling the parking lot every night from now on. The break-in showed how bad it is to have weak security and reminded us to do more to stop criminals. This robbery caused significant damage and served as a big wake-up call about the importance of keeping the store safe from theft attempts. Customer broke lamp. In this episode, tensions ran high when a customer brought in a watch expecting $400, but was offered only $10 by Les. The frustrated seller yelled, revealing that he had a baby on the way. What's going on, man? Let me at least like $400 for this watch right here. What can I do for you today? Can I get like $400 for this watch right here? It's worth a 20 mm -hmm. How much you pay for it? Made like seven. We deal in high-end watches. This was worthless. Nothing for us to deal with. Come on, give me like four fifty for this Why watch. Why are you yelling at me? I got a baby on the way, dog. Congratulations. I'm sick of give me four hundred for this watch. That ain't hard. You want ten dollars? In a fit of anger, he threw a tantrum and knocked down a lamp. This altercation quickly escalated into a heated argument. Later, Les noted that if the deal had been sealed, it would have easily covered the cost of the damaged lamp. This intense encounter highlighted the challenges of customer interactions and how emotions can flare up during negotiations. I don't want no 
I don't know do with $10. I got a baby on the way. They go do this bull to me, dog. I'm sorry. There's a bull in that place, man. It's on that tip, dog, man. Y'all, man, it's a bull. Uh, excuse me. Hey, pick it up. I'll knock you the out. You don't know who you're talking to. Show me. Y'all, don't touch me, homie. I'm out this bitch, man. Y'all, man, for real. Maybe I should have given him 400 for the watch. Then maybe he would have been able to pay me for the lamp that he broke. Y'all, I'm out this bitch, dog. It teaches valuable lessons about dealing with tough situations professionally in a high-pressure environment. TV dropped. Tensions flared on Hardcore Pawn when one woman blamed another customer for causing her TV to drop and break. She claimed that the customer didn't hold the door when she asked, leading to the accident. The upset lady demanded payment for the damage, but the other customer refused, sticking to her story. Oh, hell no. Excuse me. Excuse me. You dropped your teeth because you wanted to drop First your teeth. First of all, teeth. bitch, I said hold the door, and you ain't hold the door. Oh, well, you should have well, grabbed Well, somebody gonna pay for it, like oh, I no. said. I'm not paying. Things got worse as the angry lady insisted on compensation. As things got more heated, Ashley jumped in, pausing to gauge the growing tension. Hey, Too hey, bad. hey, hey. Shh. Hey, What's up? you, she broke my TV I when I came the door. How did she break your TV? Because I told her to hold the door, and I dropped it, and it cracked. So it's her fault? It's her fault. So where is the TV broken? You want to come take a look? Because you talking like you know. See? It's cracked. She then calmly addressed the upset lady, questioning her behavior and politely requesting her to leave the premises. OK, so what do you want me to do about it? Um, I don't know. Is you the manager? You, you the manager, it? but you ain't acting like one. You broke your mother hey, hey, ball, bitch. Hey, you broke. Hey, hey, bitch, hey. you broke it, bitch. Man, you the one was man, right. I want my money. Hey. Like I said, you going to pay for my but instead of calming down, the upset lady started hurling threats and insults, making the situation even more intense. You is the type that will get smacked. Really? Try it. Y'all got me Go get my TV. To get your you out of our store. Whoa! Hit yourself in the head. And this is what I would have did to you if you would have came close. Throwing things. A guy became increasingly agitated when Seth and Les turned down his offer to buy old TVs for cash. What's up with this? I'm just looking for a couple dollars. To be honest, I don't think we're going to take them, brother. You say what? We're not interested. His frustration overwhelmed him, resulting in him throwing objects and causing damage within the store. He made extravagant claims about his connections in Utah and accused the staff of ganging up on him. Despite his threats and disruptive behavior, Seth and Les remained unfazed and composed. Let me speak to somebody else back there. Lame ass. I was trying to tell your man, let me get a couple of dollars, you know what I'm saying? About 30, 40. You know? Yeah, I'm not interested. For real? For real. You got Pop standing behind me. What's up with that? Nothing. Y'all about, so. about to rush me or something? No, hey, your man's carrying my shit out then. Y'all want to do like that? Y'all surrounding me around this mother. Les steadfastly declined his demands, and he was firmly told never to return. Undeterred, the customer continued his outburst, unaware of the store's security protocols. On that bum ass. Listen, mother. Don't be throwing the at me. You understand that, dog? Y'all trying to get How about if we don't have you come back in? I'm up here at this mother alone. Don't even reach behind nowhere. Reach away. I don't care how old I am, I'm never too old to beat your ass. Don't try to stare me down either, because y'all got to close. Despite his destructive actions, Seth and Les stayed confident in their ability to deal with any problems. That's my Look in the dumpster, it'll be there tonight. This mother thought he was a badass. As you can see, I'm a badass. Christmas decorations. Jerry the seller introduced himself and showcased delightful Christmas decorations from Detroit's beloved JL Hudson's department store. These festive ornaments, once part of the store's window display, held sentimental value. So, uh, what you got? Some Christmas decorations that come out of the J.L. Hudson's department store from downtown Detroit. My father-in-law used to work for the warehouse down there, and uh, when they close it up in like 83, 84, they let him take these home. J.L. Hudson's is a famous department store. I remember as a kid walking down Woodward Avenue and seeing those dolls in their window. I gotta buy it. Les, recognizing the store's significance, showed interest and started talking about the price. Jerry initially asked for $500. After a careful look, Les found some minor damage but thought the overall condition was good. Playfully, Les suggested $50, but Jerry wasn't on board. How much did you want for these things? I'm looking to get $500 for all of them. Let me see how bad this thing is damaged. 
That's about the only thing that matter right there up front. Otherwise, he's in pretty good shape. Make me an offer. 50 bucks. No, no, no. If I want to get robbed, I'll go out here on 8 Mile Road. They kept negotiating, and Les explained his market expertise. Finally, Les proposed $100. They discussed, and Jerry agreed, sealing the deal. The scene not only revealed the negotiation process, but also highlighted Les's determination for a successful transaction. I think it was a very inappropriate answer that you just gave, because a lot of people live around here and they don't all get robbed. Well, and I'm not trying to rob you, but you have to understand, I don't have any customers coming in looking for this kind of stuff. I'm just taking a gamble. 250 is as low as I'm gonna go. It ain't gonna be 250. Would $100 make it better? How about 125? How about 100 and I'm not a thief? 100 hours. Got a deal. Thank okay, you very thanks. much. Step right over there. Stealing purse. In this incident, an angry woman tried to take a purse from the pawn shop, insisting it belonged to her. Ashley tried to engage the woman in a conversation, but she remained uncooperative and even threatened to jump over the counter to grab the purse. Hi, I have a question for you. Yeah. Okay, I went to get my purse back, make my payment. She's telling me this is expired. That's my purse right there. That one right there is the black one. So I want to know why it's out there. This is your purse. That's my purse right there. How do you money. know that's your purse? Because I know my purse. Here's the money. I want the purse. That bag was never in pawn, and it does not belong to that lady. If you don't give me the purse, I'm going to climb over the counter and get it myself. Give me my purse. Despite Ashley's efforts to defuse the tension, the woman continued to be aggressive, leading Ashley to call for security. This incident showed how important it is to stay calm when dealing with difficult and angry customers who can pose risks. However, Ashley's fast thinking stopped the theft and kept the shop safe from harm or damage. Would you mind getting over there and get my purse for me? Okay, first of all, that's not your purse. How do you know it's not my purse? Because that purse has been out there. Let me see it. Let me look at it. Can I look at it? Do you want to buy it? I just want to look at it and make sure it's not mine. Okay, first of all, I'm, I'm not, not... First of all, the idiot, idiot. You. give me my purse or I'm going to come over that counter and get it myself. What's it going to be? Oh my god. Get your hands off me. Have a nice day. Let's go. Walk or yourself out, you You. Hands off Walk me, yourself out. Go where you got to go. I'm going to kick your go. ass. You wait. Go. Damaged TV. A woman rushed through the doors with a damaged television in tow. Her face wore a mixture of frustration and desperation as she explained that she had purchased the TV just the day before. However, to Seth's skepticism, she had no receipt to prove her claim. Excuse me. I just bought this TV. It's broke. I put my mother DVD in here and it don't even work. You have a receipt? No, I don't. When did you buy it? I bought it yesterday. So you bought it yesterday, you don't have your receipt. No, I do not. Seth knew that without proper documentation, it would be challenging. After a few minutes of back and forth, Big Joe made a decision. I need you to give me my money back. I don't know if you bought it from us. You not only owe me $50, but you owe me for my DVD. Where's your receipt? I don't have the receipt. Excuse me, who do you think you are? Who are you? I'm Ashley, and who the hell do you think you are looking me I'm up and down? Sorry. Oh my I'm god. I Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Where are you going? To preserve the peace and maintain the store's reputation for maintaining order, he gently but firmly escorted the woman outside, explaining that her case would need to be resolved without proper documentation. I'm gonna get the best service in the world. There you oh, go. you gonna put it on the ground? Makes no sense. Anybody wanna buy a TV? You want a TV? Go home. No refund. In a heated confrontation, a psycho customer approached Les insisting on a $25 refund for a defective item. Despite Les's requirement for a receipt as proof of purchase, the customer adamantly refused to provide it, escalating tensions. The situation intensified as the customer threatened to leap over the counter, demanding a refund without the required documentation. Hey, you the owner? Check this out, man. I can turn around that paper there. What's up with that? 25 bucks, man. Come on. Gas? Duff? Sign language? What's up? Hello? We can hear you. You don't have to yell at me. Man, we're looking at this though, man. Stop yelling. What's about to make me jump over this counter in a minute? Now, if you want to be treated like a gentleman, act like one. Show me the receipt. I ain't got no receipt, man. Well, how can I give you another unit? Because I bought it from here, man. Les remained steadfast, guiding the customer to the refund counter. However, the customer's disrespectful demeanor led to swift intervention by security escorting him out of the store. I will be more than happy to exchange it for you when you bring me the receipt. What, am I supposed to carry it with me? Give me my money back now! 
Let's walk over to the refund department. Follow me. Yeah. We're gonna go right here to the refund. Man, I ain't going over there. Well, you're you going. Man, you're going. You're going. Have a nice day. Step. Bring the receipt. I don't like this place. Thank you. Merry Christmas. You got a bad attitude, bro. This incident showed how being respectful is important. The person's bad behavior meant that he didn't get a refund. Lady calls police on pawn shop. Tensions erupted at the shop when an angry customer confronted the staff regarding an incorrect order. Initially requesting diamond cut earrings, the woman received a product that fell short of her expectations. Les acknowledged the mistake and proposed a solution by adding real diamonds to the earrings. This woman came in to pick custom made earrings up. She wanted diamond cut. Diamond cut looks like little diamonds are in it. It's not actually diamonds. She thought diamond cut meant diamonds in it. Here's the deal. You can take those earrings, or I can put diamonds in it for you. We have special made them. You cannot use them on anything else. You cannot purchase anything. Okay, okay so what do we do about the money? Nothing. I'm going to keep the item here, and if you decide you want it, fine. If you don't want it, it's up to you. Okay, show me something saying if you get something customized, you cannot get your money back, and you cannot spend it in the store. Show me something. We have the receipt. Over him, y'all can give me all We have a receipt. Unhappy with this suggestion, the customer demanded a refund. The less side of the store is strict policy against refunds or exchanges for custom-made items. Frustrations mounted, leading the customer to threaten to involve the police. Here's the deal. The no, here's I'm the not deal. You show me the thing. Thing. Give me back showing. my receipt. So you saying you can't And you are supposed to show me. No, you yeah. cannot do he that. He can't even find the receipt. He's, He's getting it. Okay, don't yell. Yeah, you don't yell yeah, yeah, at nobody. It's nobody you took our money. Just walk outside. Outside, let's go. Did you have the receipt today? You Listen, stop yelling at me. Y'all ain't gave us no receipts. Oh, no. Oh, 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 we want the original copy. The police can come up here and work this out. I, I am. I'm about to. Amidst a heated argument, she dialed the authorities, citing a financial dispute with the store. Hi, yes. Can y'all send the police um, to American Jewelry? We having a problem with the owner letting us spend our money towards something in the store. On the receipt. And they're going to put us outside the store and not give us not even no receipts. Huh? OK, can I just have a car dispatch, please? So what are they saying? You're... So can we still have one dispatch? Hello? The customer left. Those earrings will stay there until they regain their senses and pick them up. Despite police involvement, the customer departed without a resolution, determined to prolong the issue until her satisfaction was met. Forgot the password. A lady entered the pawn shop intending to pawn her laptop for her sister's birthday funds, but struggled to recall the password. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? What do we got here? Uh, a laptop. A laptop. Can you type in your password? What brings you in today? I just want to pawn it in so I can give my sister some money for her birthday this weekend. Oh, okay. Forget the password. You forgot the password? Yeah. How do you forget the password? When's the last time you used this? About a month ago. You forgot your password? Yeah. Try again. She didn't know how to get into this computer. She didn't know the password. She didn't know the username. Ashley initially offered $125, while the customer sought $165. Ashley later raised the offer to $150, which the customer declined, leading to tension. There you go. Perfect. And how much did you want to get on this today? At least 165. How's 125 for you? No, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I need at least 165. I mean. All right, I can do 150, and that's what I can do. Okay, can you do 165 or not? Mm -hmm. I can do 150. Okay, it's. I know what. I ain't got time for this. I'm here to help you. Okay, well, you have a really, really bad attitude. It's like you don't like your job. You don't like your job. You shouldn't work here, sweetheart. I'm sorry. You really shouldn't. I haven't even talked. The I way, said I the, way you treat, the way you treat your customers is just so disrespectful. Accusations of disrespect and poor attitude ensued, escalating into a heated argument. The customer decided to take her business elsewhere, sparking a confrontation with another woman in the store. Igniting his seat. I actually asked. It's you. so disrespectful. Well, I'm sorry. I told you I can't you know, take one. I know it's disrespectful. Learn You're how coming. to talk. Learn how to talk. Have a good day. So are Don't you. Don't touch my stuff. You were so silly. If you want me to help you, your worst mistake is to tell me off. I can take my business somewhere else. Are you else. a lady or are you I a could... baby? Excuse me, sweetheart. Are you a lady I am a grown or are you? Ass well, you're not woman. acting like one. I am a grown woman. You're not acting Flat like out. one. Bye. What the f are you looking at? B Efforts to calm the situation failed as the conflict persisted leading to chaos. Despite attempts to defuse tensions, the atmosphere remained charged, resulting in an unsettled environment. What the f*** you looking at? I'm talking to you, bitch. What the f*** you looking at? What the f*** you looking at? Don't touch me. What the f*** you looking at? Go, bitch. You fat bitch. You come back out there. I can take my f***ing door out. You're coming in telling me I'm rude, 
I don't know how to deal with business, that I'm not classy? Take a look in the mirror, lady. You're starting a cat fight with one of my customers. Why are you still standing there? Wait, don't go outside, stay out here. Come do something, you coming to the door like you gonna do something? But man, you need to go. You don't know me, you looking at me and you wanna do something, do something. Yes, sir, I'm talking about walk away. Bye. This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching. Make sure to comment, hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell for more videos like this. Share this video to your family and friends. We'll see you soon.